So welcome to Wednesday afternoon, Truth Talk, man. You guys made it. You made it to the show. This is a very exciting moment in your day. Uh, my name is Jim Schultz here with F Cubed, and I'm going to be your tour guide for this little Truth Talk today. And I'm going to be joined by my sister-in-law, my sister in Christ, Evelyn Ariano, here in just a couple of seconds. But it's another exciting day, man. It's another good day to be alive here for this Truth Talk. And, you know, we're just two regular people, man. Just two regular people just trying to understand God's Word, just trying to share the gospel with the, you know, with society around us and just kind of see, you know, what God's going to do with that. Just kind of see what God might do with some of these seeds that we're going to plant. And so we've got a good one on tap for you guys today. We're going to talk about God's will for the next 15, 20, 25 minutes. But before we get going, the number one best way that you can support what we're trying to do here is comment, comment, comment comment below in the chat box if you happen to be watching live or in the comments below the video if you happen to be watching this on the archives and so without further ado here is my sister-in-law evelyn ariano evelyn what is going on today oh let's try that again evelyn what is <laughs> evelyn what is going on today let me turn on your audio this time hey hey can you hear me <laughs> yeah, I got you now. Oh, man, I almost, I almost had it, right? I almost had all of it there for the intro, but I, I, I botched it there at the end. Yeah, well, I'm glad we got it figured out because technology <laughs> always seems to get the best of us. Yes, it does. It's one of these days, maybe next year, maybe 2021. I don't know. Maybe we'll figure it out. But <laughs> so God's will. So this is uh, this was your this was your topic. This was something that you wanted to talk about. So before we kind of get into the things we want to cover today, I'm just curious, like what motivated you to want to include this in one of the truth talks? Um, well, I think it's just a super important subject. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard for me to think of things to talk about here. I mean, there's a million things we could talk about, and I think that actually sometimes can make it more difficult. And also, I want to think of topics that are often discussed, but not necessarily often explained. Um, so I really just chose this because I feel like it's super important. God's will is just like, I mean, it's everything. So um, I just, I thought it was really a really good topic for people to, to learn about. Yeah, I think so too. You know, I, I, I think so too. And as we're going to get into the, get into the talk today, I'll be curious to kind of see where you're going to go with it and what you have to share. And I have a couple of things that I want to say, and you know, you really hit the nail on the head there. I mean, if you really think about it, if you really think about God's will and you really think about what that means, and that's kind of where we're going to kick things off here today. But just to kind of kick off the kickoff, I mean, it really is, it really is kind of the guiding force, the, the, you know, the, the North Star, the Christmas star, which we tried to see in the sky the other night, which was a total, total anticlimactic moment. Did you see the Christmas star the other night? I didn't, I didn't see, I couldn't look for it that night, but I actually saw it at like 5.30 a.m. Oh, wow. Day. So you saw it. So you saw it. The, so the next morning or the morning before? The morning, the next morning. The next morning. Okay. Because, yeah, I, I saw nothing that resembled anything close to a Christmas star in the sky. And we were looking, man. We were looking hard. It was like, it was like for me at the, at, in the morning, it was like, I actually forgot about it. But because I saw this thing in the sky, I remembered. But it's like, it was a, just a giant star it didn't have like the cross thing that i've seen in pictures but mm -hmm. maybe it did for some people that night so i don't know but i wish i could have seen the real deal <laughs> nah man i think i think we got i think we got gypped uh, there was no christmas star but anyway but uh, h wilson popped in real quick he said hey brother james i'm on early to say good afternoon just in case i missed the show he actually dropped this in the comment box before we even went live it was like an hour ago oh, when i posted okay. the link so we appreciate you there uh h wilson yeah. god bless you too my man i hope you have a great day as well thanks for dropping that in the chat box and uh for those of you that might be watching live we would love to know what you guys think i mean hit me with whatever man questions comments emojis they don't even have to be relevant to what we're talking about, but YouTube loves that stuff, man. So just, just drop it in there. I don't even care. So, so let's kick it off. So what is God's will? So Evelyn, I'm going to let you take the first stab at this because this was your topic and that is not an easy question. So I'm going to let you kind of lead us through the forest on this one. Okay. So my first answer, like my personal definition is just that God's will is his perfect and sovereign plan for humanity. So obviously that's 
super simple. But um, I also wanted to bring in something from John Piper that went along with this. And I'll kind of explain why afterwards. But um, knowing the difference between the two meanings of the will of God the will of God is crucial to understanding one of the biggest and most perplexing things in all the Bible, namely that God is sovereign over all things and yet disapproves of many things, which means that God disapproves of some of what he ordains to happen. That is, he forbids some of the things he brings about and he commands some of the things he hinders. So I wanted to include this because I think it it really points out perfectly that not everything that God has willed for our life is going to be sunshine and rainbows. And I think we often as Christians misconstrue the will of God as being this perfect thing. And that Mm -hmm. our life is just going to be, if we go by God's will, then our life is going to be this perfect planned out thing. And, and John Piper, you kind of have to read over his stuff several times to, to really take it in, but he's always really good at explaining that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Well, so I mean, you really, I mean, you really kind of. Uh, oh, Sean just popped in. Let me, let me, let me toss him on the screen here. Hey, Sean, greeting, greeting to you too, my hey. friend. Uh, from, if I'm not mistaken, down in South Africa. Uh, that's crazy. I think it's already 2021 in South Africa. So that's. Uh, <laughs> let us know how it is, man. Like we we're hearing good things about 2021. So let us know. But uh, no, I, I mean, obviously, John Piper, you can't go wrong with John Piper. I mean, he's always going to really steer you like, just like straight to the truth. Like he's going to get to the, yeah. cr- the truth in a, in a very blunt and direct way. And to just remember that, you know, God's will and his perfect will, his perfect sovereignty over this world is, is, is not necessarily going to lead us to, you know, sunshine and rainbows, as you so eloquently put it. I totally agree. And, you know, this whole idea that, that God allows things to happen that, you know, m- may not necessarily be super positive, that may not necessarily be all good, right? That may not necessarily be 100% good in the moment. I mean, there's a ton of evil in the world, right? There's a ton of sin in the world that for reasons that we can't figure out, you know, God is allowing these things to happen. They're not slipping through the cracks. Like, they're not sneaking by him. He's like, oh, man, I just let that one go by. Like, that's not what's happening. For some reason that we don't exactly know, you know, he is letting these things happen. And so I think that that's really important as we start to kind of unpack and try to understand God's will, you know, what it means in general and how we apply it to our lives. I think that's, like, super, super important. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I don't want to be like the, you know, I tend to, I think because— because social media and stuff tends to make like the, the, there's a lot of people who are preaching the gospel that tend to make everything um, just great and perfect when you follow Jesus. And it's just, it's not. And, you know, but we can, we can trust in the fact that in his will, even when we have to go through trials and the hard stuff, he's going to bring us, on the other side and it's going to be perfect all in the end as believers. So, um, there is hope in the situation too. And that's, you know, that's really, uh, man, what a great word there at the end. And that was really what I was going to focus on in trying to understand and, you know, kind of lay out some foundation for God's will is that it's all about hope. It's all hope. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's all redemption. It's all two things that no other worldview can promise you. It's all two mm-hmm. things that no other, I mean, you can call it whatever you want to call it. You can call it a belief system. You can call it a religion. You can call it whatever you want to call it. It doesn't make a difference, right? But none of them, none of them can offer you the hope and the redemption that can be found in the gospel. None of them can. And so when we try to think about God's will, we try to decipher God's will, especially for our own lives, which we're going to talk about here in a second, but even in just a grander kind of bigger picture type of thing, it's like, man, why is God allowing this to happen? Like, why, why is God allowing X to happen? Why is God allowing Y to happen? I mean, why did, you know, I mean, for some people that may not know this about me and kind of my story and my family. So growing up, so, so my dad was married twice. So my, my mom and dad are still together. They don't love each other. They don't even really like each other, but they're still together. They, they, (laughs) they made it happen. Right. Uh, they've been married for a long time, but my, my dad was married before my mom. So I have like half brothers and sisters. So I actually have five sisters and three brothers. And so there's, there's nine of us total, but in my immediate family, 
there is me, and then there is my three sisters. Well, back in, this was back in, in 2008, uh, my older sister, she was like a year and a half older than me. I mean, I'm 39 now. She would have been, I think she would have just turned 41. Uh, she died suddenly. Like she went into, uh, she went into a doctor's appointment for like a, like a like kind of a routine type of procedure. Like she wasn't feeling well and she was kind of set up for like a, a hysterectomy and it was, you know, hysterectomy is, it's a big deal, but it, it's, it's done all the time. Like it's a fairly common yeah. procedure. Like it wasn't a super high risk situation. Well, anyway, you know, six hours later, I get a phone call from my younger sister, like, hey, Mandy's not going to make it. Like, they found, like, stage four cancer, like, it came out of nowhere. Like, I'm like, whoa. Like, it was so crazy. Yeah. And so my sister died suddenly, you know, back in 2008. I mean, that was 12 years ago now. And so, like, when things like that happen to us, then they happen close to home like that. It can be really difficult to try to find God's will in those situations. And we can even look at history, right? I mean, we can look at, like... You know, Nazi Germany, right? We can look at the Holocaust. We can look at, you know, Hiroshima. We can look at a million different things, right? And and it can be difficult to find God's will in those situations. But if we remember the cross, if we remember what happened, you know, on Calvary, then it's like, man, I have a hope that no other place in this world or the world beyond can give me. And so when I think about God's will, it really just gets funneled right back to the hope and the, and the grace and the redemption that can only be found through Jesus. I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's really good. I love how you always take it back to gospel, just Jesus on the cross, because it's so important that we constantly talk about that. I mean, I constantly, I need the reminder. So, um, yeah, I, I really love that. So, so Ross, so my man, Ross, uh, Ross, what's going on, man? I hope everything is going well up there in the Northeast. I hope uh, things are going well. I'm sure you're in a crazy situation with school and with your kids and stuff like that up at the oh, academy. Yeah. Shoot me an email, man. And let me know how that's going because that's gotta be pretty wild these days. But he said, this is a big point that atheists hang on to. How can God be loving and allow for all the suffering in, in the world? Mm -hmm. I don't know, Evelyn, do you have an extra 37 minutes? Do you want to try to, do you want to try to tackle that? <laughs> <laughs> what what oh, do you man, what do you think? I mean I have, it before. We did, we did, we did a true talk on that. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you wanna you wanna toss Ross the highlights real quick? Or maybe the low lights? Yeah. Well <laughs> Well, um it's yeah, it's such a complex um subject, but I have noticed that a lot of atheists hang on the fact that um, you know, if God was so good then why would he allow all of these things to happen? But the thing is, like, we, we are a tiny, tiny, <clears throat> tiny piece to a giant puzzle. And so there are a lot of things going on be behind the scenes, first of all. And second of all, we, um, you know, it's not the answer that everybody wants to hear, but we are not, you know, God's ways are high higher than our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So we're not going to understand why he does everything. And I think a lot of people in society today have a problem with that because they feel like, because it's all about, the, it's all about the God of self. Like they feel if I wouldn't do th this, why would, you know, a good God do this and it's because they don't know his ways and so it, it's it could we could go on forever about this but no we absolutely um, could I'm no we definitely could <laughs> and ross and ross even said i have a comment on that but i want to get to ross ross even said i've i've made an analogy to parents allowing kids to make mistakes i get it but others just can't see how god can be loving mm -hmm. and allow so much suffering and i really love that comment ross because it really speaks to what evelyn just said and and not not only when it comes to mistakes but just in a in a grander sense it's like as parents Parents, we can see things that our kids can't see. We understand things that our kids can't possibly understand yet. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's like, you know, why would we allow our kids to suffer in something that, you know, in the grand scheme of life is very trivial. It doesn't make a difference. We're only talking about, you know, <laughs> you know, a, a toy fish in the bathtub. We're only talking about, you know, going to soccer practice on Saturday mornings. I mean, these are real things that I'm dealing with right now. And it's like, I can see things that they can't see and I can understand things that they can't understand. And so my letting them maybe suffer for a short period of time, you know, is actually in their best interest. Now let's take that same idea and let's extrapolate that out to our relationship with God. 
like again, Evelyn really hit the nail on the head. You know, it, it's all about the God of self. It's all about self salvation in today's world. That is that is 2020. But we know that's not the truth, and we know that is a bold faced lie. We know that is a falsehood if there ever was one. So when we think about our relationship with God, it's like, man, if I'm the God of self, if it's all about me and my stuff, then this is all there is. And, and, and my stuff and my job and my career and my status, that all comes at the forefront of every single thing. But as a Christian, like we know that our time on this earth, whether it be 85 years or 100 years if you're taking your fish oil, or maybe 45 years or 50 years, it's like in the grand scheme of eternity, the millions and millions and millions of years that we're going to spend in God's kingdom, it's nothing. It's a blip on the radar screen. So even if, you know, heaven forbid, we did have to experience immense suffering while we're here on earth. I'm not trying to downplay that. And I'm not trying to, you know, just give cold comfort to that because some people have to go through that every single day. Mm -hmm. The reality is still in the grand scheme of life. That is like me talking to Eli about soccer practice on Saturday morning. It really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, amen. That was really good. I, I can't even add to that. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. So, no, that's good stuff, Ross, man. We appreciate you popping in today. It's really, really good stuff. Yes. So how do we discern God's will for our lives, though, Evelyn? I think this is the one thing. This is kind of where I focused my energies in preparation for today. And so I'll be curious to hear what you have to say when it comes to this, because I think that from a practical standpoint, like if I, if I was tuning into our two talk today, like I'd be like, all right, man, this is what I came for. Like, how do I discern God's will for my life? So what, so what do you think about that? Yeah, because I think that like the hot button topic is kind of like, what's my, what's the, what's my purpose in this world? What, how can I figure out what God wants of me? And oftentimes I don't think it's immediately clear. Like even for the strongest Christians, like we always like to say, my mom says, but Has, hashtag it's, Mary not Riddle. Always, <laughs> yeah, it's not always, it's not always clear. Um, and so what it says in Philippians one, six is he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of of Christ Jesus. So this should give us confidence in that um, he's going to make our path straight. So like if things seem crazy right now, but we're praying about, we're praying about our decisions. And I think that's vital because I think a lot of times we go into life. I mean, I know I do, I've gotten better at it, but I still, you know, I'm making decisions without going to God first. And so if we're, if, if we're going to God first, then we know he's going to put us on the right path. We can make a mistake. Yes, we have free will, but I don't like the notion that some people put out there that like we have free will. So we're like changing God's plan. No, we can't. He knows what we're going to do. Like he knows, he knows what the end path is going to be regardless of the choices that we make. So no matter what, no matter what choice you make, you can rest assured that God is going to put you back on the path like like a gps he's going to reroute you back on the right path but i think that it's really important that we're praying and we're asking god to show us his will constantly and i think he really will reveal that to you eventually yeah i think so too and, and i mean just to, just to go ahead and check off the box because we bring it up every other truth talk it really is all about daily time in the word and daily yeah. prayer. I mean, you kind of hit on the prayer thing, but of course, time in the word, you got the input, you've got the output. That is so critical to having any chance of discerning God's will in your life. But I really love what you said about, you know, if you make if you make a mistake, if you make the wrong call, if you make the wrong move, like if you choose the wrong job, if you choose the wrong career, like if you if you make the wrong decision in a given moment, and sometimes it can be a major major decision. We can rest in the fact that we are not going to alter God's design, not in the macro and not in the micro. We are not going to alter God's perfect design for the entire world and the universe and the history of mankind. And we're also not going to alter his plan for our lives. He has a plan for our lives. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I can't, I can't marry the two things together where you have free will and also God's plan being perfectly designed. I don't know how those coexist. I don't know. Yeah. But that doesn't mean yeah. that they don't. 
It just means that yeah. I can't figure it out. It just means that we can't figure it out. And of course, I stole that right. from Tim Culler, who is much, much smarter than I am when it comes to many things in life, especially this. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly right. Just because I can't get there and we can't get there intellectually doesn't mean that you can't get there. It just means that we right. can't get there, you know, in, in, in our limited our limited mindset. But when I think about you know, God's will for our lives. I mean, I really love what you said about not being afraid to make mistakes, you know, make a choice, right? Make a choice. Mm -hmm. And through daily prayer or consistent prayer, through daily time in the word, consistent time in the word, like you'll give yourself a fighter's chance. Like you'll give yourself, you know, an opportunity to start making good decisions. And then, you know, as time goes on, as you grow as a ch as a Christian, as you mature as a Christian, you will start to make wiser and wiser mm -hmm. decisions. And, you know, another yeah. thing that's really interesting is if you think about wisdom, in, in scripture, you think about wisdom in the Bible and you think about, you know, the, the different books of wisdom, like the Proverbs, obviously are going to be probably the first one that comes to people's minds. If you read through the Proverbs and I've only read through it once and, you know, there was a lot of things I missed, I'm sure. But one of the things that I picked up on was God very, very rarely tells you what to do. He very, very ra rarely tells you exactly the decision to make or the move that needs to be, you know, completed in that moment. Instead, what he does is he shows you the characteristics and the traits and the thought patterns and the thought processes that a wise person would take to make that decision. And so rather than like giving you wisdom, you know, it's kind of like, you know, teaching a man to fish versus, you know, giving a man a fish. Rather than giving you a fish, God is teaching us how to fish. Rather than just giving us wisdom, he's showing us the pathway to become wise on our own. And so as we do that, you know, I think we'll start to make more and more decisions that are in line with, with God's will. But when it comes to, you know, like how you treat your spouse, right? Like that's something that's very much in line with God's will. Putting your spouse first. This is something that every single person who is watching or listening to this and is married, this is one way you can start to practice being in God's will by putting your spouse first. By putting your spouse yeah. above everything else in your life other than God himself. I mean, that that is that is scriptural. That is biblical. That is what we are called to do. And sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's really difficult. But that's one way that we can practice. You know, and then, of course, we can talk about careers and, and hobbies and things like that. But I don't know. I just kind of went off for, for a while there. What do you got? Oh, <laughs> no, I, I, love that you, <laughs> I love that you brought up wisdom because that just makes me think about Okay, if I don't, if I'm like super overwhelmed about trying to discern God's actual will, just pray for wisdom. Just pray, God, give me wisdom that only comes from you. And I've had some moments where I just, I, I'm like, how is he going to make this decision clear for me? Like, how is this going to happen? And then some way or another, he just like makes me not into it anymore or whatever. And then I'm just like, and then I, I'm able to look back on my life and I'm like, whoa, if I would have made another decision, you know, all of this stuff would kind of have a domino effect. So it's kind of like, I, I think it's, I think it's a really good idea that if you're overwhelmed by the idea of trying to um, discern God's will to pray for wisdom. And I think um, the Proverbs are a really good place to, to start with um, kind of putting scripture into prayer, you can pray the Proverbs. And actually I have, we didn't discuss this, but I actually have two short Proverbs here. I have Proverbs 16, one, which is the plans of the heart belong to, to man, but the answer of, of the tongue is from the Lord. And then the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. So that just um, goes to show that, you know, we can have all of these plans in our heart, but <laughs> He is going to have the final answer and the final call. So that gives me a lot of, um, I, I can rest in that a lot more easily when it's not all on me. Yeah, no kidding, man. No kidding. And H. Wilson popped back in. He, he tossed us an amen. Then he tossed us to praise <laughs> God. Then he tossed us another amen. So H. Wilson's blowing up the chat box. That's what we need, man. We got to beat it. the we got to beat the YouTube algorithm, and that's the only way to do it. So that's uh, so that's yeah. some good stuff. But um, so I have two comments that I want to make. So one is, uh, there was one scripture that I actually got ready for us here in, in one of the, uh, the images that I have for us. This is probably the most famous verse uh, that relates to God's will. Do you know what I'm going to pull up, Evelyn? Is it from Romans? No. Oh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good guess, though. 
Because whenever you hear this is the most famous verse, Romans is almost yeah. always a safe, a very safe, uh, safe play. But no, this well, is I from. Have one. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. This this is Matthew twenty six, and I want to focus on verse thirty nine because this is Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane right before he's about to, you know, uh, go to his death, and he says, and going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, "My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me." Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And so I kind of wanted to, I wanted to bring that up just in a general sense. And then I'll share one other uh, personal kind of story that uh, was one example of how I found God's will very, very clearly in my life, even though I did not want to find it. I think this might kind of help some people out. So I think when we look at Matthew 26, uh, 39 there, right, you have Jesus, the most powerful man to ever exist. F you know, he, he, had the full deity of God at his disposal. And he was still submissive to the Father's will. Mm -hmm. He was still submissive to Father God's grand design for, you know, the earth, for the world, for the history of mankind. And as he was getting to the to the end, as he was getting close to, you know, feeling, experiencing, kind of sensing what was about to happen to him, you know, he still kind of wanted to just kind of double check and make sure like, hey, you know, like, is there another way around this? And I really love that verse. I love that verse because it really speaks to the fact that Jesus was not only fully God, but he was also fully man. He was also yeah. fully man in that moment. And that is such an honest thing to say. Like when yeah. I when I read that verse, I, I it's very rare that you you know think about Jesus and his honesty, not his honesty in telling the truth. Like of course that makes sense, but I mean his honesty in you know his 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 fear in that moment, mm. his honesty yeah. in what was about to happen to him, his honesty in you know understanding and carrying the weight of the world's sin on his shoulders. And so when I think about that verse, and I think, all right, here is the most powerful man to ever exist in the in, in the universe and in the in the greatest moment in his life he wanted to do something that was in line with the father's will if he can do it then then i can do it when i'm interacting with autumn i can do it yeah. when i'm playing with my kids i can do it when i'm disciplining my kids i can do it in my career choices I can do it in my, you know, my hobby choices. I can do it in all these different things. And I'm still going to fail. And I'm still going to make really bad decisions along the way. But again, as we kind of said earlier, you know, the daily time in, in the word and the daily time in prayer can really, really be powerful, powerful things. But one really, so, so one kind of personal thing, and this is actually, this is actually quite personal. This is a fun little fact about me that a lot of people probably don't know. And this will surprise a lot of people. So my, so my area of expertise, if you want to call it that, would be finance, right? Like that's the, the, the chosen field of study that I have studied for many, many years. I mean, 20 years now of, of my life. And I'm so fortunate to have been a, a professor in the academic uh, world. And now I work for Tasty Trade, of course. And it's incredible. It's, it's terrific. I'm actually not very good at, ma at making financial decisions on my own. And this has proven to be very, very costly in my life, in my adult life. I've made some really, really bad decisions, some really, really ex expensive decisions where, you know, I hurt myself. I hurt the people that loved me. I hurt a lot of people around me by making the decisions that I made. And so even though I didn't really want to listen to God's will, even though I didn't really want to go down this path that God was sending me down, I really kind of wanted to be off in the forest all by myself and able to make these decisions, you know, alone because I'm like, man, I can do this. Like, this is what I've been studying for. Like, I can do this. Like, this is where my training is. Like, you know, my ego really kind of took over. But God finally got me to a moment in my life where he said, listen, like, this is not, this is not the pathway forward for you. And by pathway forward, he obviously still has me in the world of finance, which I'm so blessed that I am. But what he meant was, you know, there, there's that line in scripture. I can't think of where it is now, but it's, it's really famous, really popular where scripture reminds us, hey, we need to have, you know, many counselors in our, in our lives. We need to have the wisdom of many counselors. Well, when it comes to making, you know, big financial decisions, I actually need counselors in my life. I can't, I am not equipped to do those things on my own. And I've learned that the hard way. And so that's a really good example of God's will in my life. At a time when I didn't want it to be God's will, I fought tooth and nail against God's will. 
But because I was regularly in the word and because I was regularly in prayer, you know, God finally made it clear to me. And I finally realized it myself, you know, after many, many years of making bad decisions, which is kind of what you alluded to earlier. And so I wanted to share that with everybody because it's a very real example in my life. And maybe it will help somebody out there that they might be going through something, you know, similar that might not be related to money or finance or greed or anything like that, but it's something else. That, that has a hold over them. And it's like, man, if you really stick with it, like God, God really will show you the way, just like you kind of said. Yeah, that's really good. I really appreciate your, um, you being vulnerable. Cause I know that that's not, I mean, that's very personal. And, um, it also just is another indicator of how redeeming God is. Like he, he really just brings us, you know, through, these things it's like we can keep messing up and keep messing up but he will always take us back with loving arms and so that's always just such a great reminder and it's funny that you brought up the um matthew 26 39 verse because that was my my actual that was my last point as well Mm. um so i just i i think it's good to um to use jesus as our example and how to pray the will of god like we we can pray and ask god our requests like he's asking please take this from me god please do not let me have to go through this but but not my will your will be done and that's a great thing to pray or you can pray you can still ask god for what you're you're feeling you can cry out to god and just um you know that's that's a way that you can have a really great relationship with him and get to know him better but then just say at the end of your prayer but not my will yours be done and uh, I try to add that in pretty much with every prayer these days because it's like um you know I I want him to to let his will come to pass which he's going to anyway but when he when he when you pray that and then he he does it in that way it's it's like you you can hear from God more easily and you can know that he's really working in your life. So uh, I just think that's a really great Matthew 26, 39. That's a great example of how to pray. Yeah, no, Matthew 26, 39 is, is really, really good. And, and I love the way that you end your prayers there, you know, not your will, but, or not my will, but your will be done. Like that's just, that's really powerful. And I mean, any time that we can, we can model Jesus in our lives, you know, in our yeah. daily lives and our prayer lives, like that's always going to be a really positive thing. And so, so Sean yeah. said, so we got a couple of comments that came in, man, you guys are awesome. Blowing us up in the comments. Yeah. I love it. Again, if you're watching this live, hit us up with some stuff in the chat box as we kind of wind things down. Or if you're watching this in the archives, uh, hit me up in the comment box below. I would love to connect with you uh, down there. But Sean said, my take, God's will in my life was slightly different. Here it comes. So I think he has something he's queuing up for us. So we'll have to wait a second on that. And then Ross said, how do you know if the roadblock in front of you is God's redirection or if it's just a challenge to make you stronger? (laughs) Ross, dude, man, Ross, Ross bringing the fire today. Like Ross is bringing that, that holiday thunder today. Like this is really, uh, this is something, man. So I'll take this one first. I know a lot of times I kind of throw you to the wolves and make you go first, Evelyn. So I'll take this one first, actually. Um, So there was something that a counselor actually shared this one with me, a counselor that I was seeing. It was helping me through some things. He shared this with me and it was extremely powerful, extremely powerful. Like we were talking about the different things in my life and the different things that I have going on, like, you know, like finance and bodybuilding and just a lot of different things. And he was a Christian guy. And so, you know, my being a Christian guy, like it's, I, I think it's important to get, you know, counsel from, you know, Christian, other Christian men, women, figures, whatever. And I actually asked him the same question, Ross. I had a similar question. I basically said, hey, how do I know? Like when I face adversity, that was the word that I used. I said, when I face adversity, how do I know if God is redirecting me or if he is just wanting me to emerge stronger? Like, how do I know if it's time to to hang it up and kind of pivot into a different direction or if I should just kind of blast through this thing? Because I was honest with him. I said, honestly, man, like my 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 temperament is I just put my head down. And I blast through everything. And Ross, I've kind of gotten to know you a little bit over the years. I think you might be similar in that way. And so sometimes we were kind of doing one of these jobs and I'm like, man, some, that doesn't always end really well for me. And he had a really, really great answer that really helped me a lot. And it, it stuck with me ever since. He said, Jim, he said, the thing that I would remember is with whatever you choose to do, whether you choose to pivot or you choose to go through it or you choose to do whatever, he was like, the thing you need to ask yourself is this, is what I'm choosing to do 
bringing glory and honor to God. Mm. And I was like, wow, man, that's so good. Because he just took, I had this like super complicated question with like all these subplots and like all these different things. And he just boiled it down into one simple thing. He said, hey, are you bringing honor and glory to God? And Because if the answer is yes, then I don't really know that God necessarily, I mean, God cares what we do, of course. But I don't know that he's going to care so much if we choose to pivot or go through it if our ultimate end goal is to bring glory and honor to him. So that's what I would say to you, Ross. But I don't know. What do you think about that, Evelyn? Man, these are some great questions that's, today. Yeah, these are really good. I that's a I just love that answer because it's kind of like how can you go wrong if you can like uh, if you can say that this is honoring and glor um, glorifying to God, then it's kind of like, even if it's the wrong decision, I mean, you're not really going wrong, like you said. And so um, and I do, I do believe though, that God does use a ton of stuff to strengthen us and, um, and make us stronger in Christ. Um, so there's just been so many, so many times in my life where I was just like, why are you letting me like deal with this? And then afterwards I was like, oh, it's because I'm way closer with God. Now I have, you know, just a much stronger relationship with him. And that's most important. So I love your answer though, Jim. That's oh, great. thank you. Thank you. That's a great question though, Ross. That's a really great question. So we had yeah. a couple more. Um, so Okay, so Sean popped in and said, God's will for your life, it would be a life full of the fruits of the Spirit, where love, humility, and humbleness, not to mention sharing the gospel, play the dominant part. Like, I mean, I really think that just as a, just as a roadmap for daily living, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty solid indeed. And then uh, John, hey, good to see you, man. So John popped in today, he said Proverbs 15. I think he might be referring to when I said the, the many counselors. Um, I think the many counselors oh. might be, it might be Proverbs 15. So John, I think that might be what you're, uh, what you're, uh, bringing up there. So, uh, Oh, H Wilson said, thank, Ev thanks Evelyn for being such a great guest and co-host on the show today. She is so wonderful. God bless her. Well, how about that? Look at you. Oh, thank you. That picking really up, means a lot to me. Picking up some groupies on the truth talk. All right. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. So, uh, and then Sean said, uh, these fruits of the spirit only grow in a garden of obedience. Oh man, that's really good. I'm going to definitely steal that for the future. If I can remain yeah. obedient, which I fail to numerous times, yeah, you are not alone. I can expect a life that reflects God's will for the entire world to see. That is absolutely true. And, uh, and Ross kind of, Ross enjoyed the answer there. So that's good, man. That's really, really good. So, uh, I don't know, Evelyn, um, do you have any, do you have any parting shots here? for everybody when it comes to discerning God's will for our lives? Well, I think I kind of going back to um, that comment that we just had about the fruits of the spirit. Um, I think it's just good to, uh, like you said earlier, pray for wisdom and also pray that we um, can turn against temptation and that we would have more of the fruits of the spirit so that, so that we can be more obedient because if we're obedient and we're um, bearing good fruit and we are trying to pray in God's will, I really don't think that we um, can be steered wrong. Like we will, we will face adversity. We will, we will face many trials of many kinds and we will go through suffering um, <clears throat> different levels, some easier than others, some very excruciatingly hard, but God really does have um, our best in mind. Uh, and I know that he will, he will take his plan out and we will be able to discern his will. And the more we grow in our relationship with him, we will be able to just discern that more easily. So it's just, it gives you a lot of, um, I hope that gives you encouragement because like the more we grow in in Christ, the more he shows us that. Yeah, no, that's really it, man. And it's just like, you know, take all that, take everything that Evelyn just said, all, all the, you know, those eight, nine, 10 or 11 nuggets of wisdom that she just laid down for us. <laughs> and I would, ju I would just remember, I would just remember that we are free. We are totally free in Christ. Mm -hmm. We are completely yeah. free through the blood of Jesus and only through the blood of Jesus. And so what does that yeah. mean for you today in your life? That means go out, Right. Try to live a life that reflects Christ's love. Try to live a life that shares the gospel with the world around you and try to live a life that would bring honor and glory to God. But man, you're going to mess up and you are going to make mistakes and you are not going to live out God's will a lot of the time. And you know what? It's OK. It's OK. 
yeah. because of Jesus. It's okay because of the gospel. And so I think that that, you know, take all those things together. And I don't know, Evelyn, I think we might, uh, I think we might have something there. Yeah. I love that. There you go. And Wilson, Wilson, lo- he, he, he's happy to be one of your groupies. So there you go. So you have, you have officially one groupie. I have zero groupies. So, uh, so that's good. You oh, know? whatever. <laughs> No, I got I've got myself some groupies here and there. Uh, so Ross, Ross said, "Love it. I'm definitely going to use it. It is bringing glory and honor to, to to God. I think God would be honored if I can add ten pounds to my squat." Yeah, I th- hey hey, God Me cares too. about God cares about everything. I can assure you that God cares mightily about the chains that I have in my garage right now that I'm using to boost my accommodating resistance. God cares about that <laughs> stuff, man. He really, really does. And uh, and so uh, H. Wilson said, y'all are doing good work on her, making our father proud. I absolutely love it. Hey, man, mm-hmm. thank you. That's really, wow, that really, really means the world. And then Sean said, yeah. blessed Christmas to all. Hey, Merry Christmas to you guys, too, yes, and Merry happy holidays. Christmas. Um, we will most likely not be on next Wednesday cause it's kind of that weird week between uh, Christmas and New Year's, but we'll, we'll come back in the, uh, in the New Year's strong. So Evelyn, if people want to find you and reach out to you before I send them on their way, how can they do that? Um, you can find me on Instagram at ev.ariana, which is A-R-E-L-L-A-N-O. There you go. Beautiful. All right, guys. Well, that is it. Thank you so much, Evelyn, for uh, the True Talk today. We really had a good time, as I always do every single Wednesday. And for those of you that popped in live, hey, thank you guys so much. We are so humbled and so honored that you're choosing to spend some time with us. It really, really just means the world to me. If you guys want to support what we're doing here, you can like the video. That would help. You can leave me a comment down below if you're watching this in the archives. Any comment, man. Questions, comments, emojis, they're all welcome. You could share this with a friend. Just text this link to a friend and say, hey, check these guys out. It might kind of lift your spirits, might kind of help you discern God's will for your life. That would really help. And if you're brand new to the channel, hey, subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. We've got some fun things in store for 2021, and uh, I think it's going to be good. So that is it. This Truth Talk has come to a close. I hope you guys have a really, really great Wednesday. And so uh, through Christ alone, we will see